All right, so this video is going to be on area of regular polygons. Regular polygon, the definition that we have here is going to be a convex polygon that is both equilateral and equiangular. What we need to remember about those is equilateral means all sides are congruent and equiangular is all angles are congruent. Okay. Circumscribed circle is going to be a circle that contains all the vertices of this regular polygon. Okay, and we'll get more into that in a little bit. The radius uh, is going to be, we know what a radius is of a circle. A radius of a regular polygon is going to end up being the radius of the polygon's circumscribed circle. So that circumscribed circle that we just talked about. The apothem, this is going to be one thing that we need in our, um, in our formula that we'll see here in a minute. This is going to be a segment that is drawn from the center to the midpoint of any side of the polygon. Okay, Again, we're going to see all of this coming in this picture soon. You have a, reg a regular polygon with A squared units. You're going to have the perimeter and the apothem that you're going to use. So your area is going to be equal to little a is your apothem, big A is your area. So you have your apothem times the perimeter divided by 2. This is going to be our formula. Okay. So let's take a look at the diagram down here and identify these different parts. So here we're going to be seeing we have our circumscribed circles, a circle all the way around, okay? And you're going to notice right here your apothem, or so let's start with the radius. The radius is going to go from the center to the circle, to its circumscribed circle, and it's going to end up going to each vertice, okay? But if you ignore the polygon, try to ignore the polygon in the middle, a radius goes from the center of the circle to any point on that circle. So now it's going to end up being that vertex. Your apothem is going to get, not going to hit the circle, okay? Your apothem is going to go from the center. It's going to stop at the side length, but it's going to hit that midpoint, okay? So we're actually going to have a perpendicular bisector, okay? And then you've got your central angle in here that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Let's take a look here, and I'm going to add in some colors. We have square FGHJ is inscribed, meaning written inside of circle K. So we want to name the center. Well, easy enough, your center is going to be right here, what the circle is named after. This is going to be K. Okay. Then we want to name all the radii. Well, we only have two radii here. It's okay, from the center to the circle. So here we have segment KG. And we have another one over here, segment KH, going all the way to the circle. This does not go to the circle, so that's not going to be the radius, KH. The apothem, though, okay, your apothem is going to go from the center to that midpoint of the side. It will not go all the way to the circle. So right here, I didn't mean to color these in case you're using colors as well. Okay, so here are your radii. Your apothem will be segment KL. Notice the difference between the, two, but the radii and the, and the, uh, the apothem, okay? Then we're going to name a central angle of the polygon. Okay, we'll just go ahead and just grab this central angle right here because this is what we're going to be looking at later on. All right, so we're going to have angle G, K, H. Now, find the measure of the central angle. We're going to get more into this um, on, the next, um, on the next page, but for your central angle, for your uh, this is going to be your... Uh, we're going to take the 360 all the way around and we're going to divide it by the number of sides we have and this central angle right here is going to end up being 90 degrees we're going to be doing something just a little bit different though but that's how we find the central angle so let's take a look at our first problem actually let's take a look at trigonometry because we're going to need to use trigonometry to find some of these things so as a reminder to find an um, apothem or your side length we're going to be missing some information. We need to remind ourselves exactly what we have as our um, trigonometry, our trigonometric functions here. We have the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, this being theta, okay, your opposite over hypotenuse. Your cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and your tangent would be opposite over adjacent. So we're going to get back into this. 
So finding uh, steps to finding a missing length or apothem here. We're going to create a right triangle inside by drawing the radius and the apothem. So right here we have the apothem going straight down 90 degrees. Your radius is going to hit that vertex. We're going to find the angle of the triangle that is formed. Now your central angle, we had both, it was between two different radii. We used the 360 divided by the number of sides. Well, we have to do a little bit different here. In this formula we're going to be using your, uh, that the angle we're going to be using is going to be the 360 divided by two times the number of sides, okay, and being the number of sides. And then we're going to use our trigonometric functions, and we're going to set up and figure out what we're missing. So let's jump straight into this. Here we have a triangle, and we're told that the apothem is going to be 11. So what we need to do here is we need to go ahead and draw in one of our radii. So now we have this 90 degree angle. Or sorry, it's 90, yeah, we have a right triangle. We're going to find our, um, our a, uh, sorry, we're going to find that angle first. So if we take this triangle off to the side, I'm going to try to draw it a lot like what we have in our picture here. Here's your 90 degree angle. Here's 11, okay? That angle that we're looking for, theta, we're going to need to take this 360 divided by 2n up here, n being 3, right, because we have three sides. So 360 divided by 3, sorry, 2 times the number of sides. Let me do this correctly. 2 times n was 3, okay? When we plug this all into the calculator, we're going to find out that our theta is going to come out to be 60 degrees. So the angle we're looking for is right here. That's, our, that's the angle we just found, our 60. So right here, our reference angle is 60 degrees. What we need to find in order to do this, we need the side length. In order to find that side length, we don't need the radius right here. Okay? We need the side length all right here. Now, when we use our trigonometry, you need to understand we're only finding half. Okay? So you're going to see we're going to end up doubling it. But what we're looking for is this. Okay? So we take a look at our trigonometric functions. We say, okay, here's our angle. What size am I using? Well, I'm not using hypotenuse. Here, across from the 60-degree angle is going to be our opposite side and adjacent, that 11. So we're using our adjacent and our opposite side telling us that we're going to be using tangent or a TOA. So we'll go over here and set up our, trigonometric, our, our equation for trigonometry. We're going to have the tangent of the angle of 60 equal to, we want opposite x over adjacent 11. We learned this when we are in the uh, denominator, whenever the x is in the numerator, sorry, if we look at it as cross multiplication, we're going to cross multiply this x and get x, and then we're going to cross multiply these guys. So we're going to wind up with 11 times the tangent of 60. Again, this is where, because we're using trigonometry, you need to make sure you're very, very careful that you are in degrees, not radians. Okay, when we plug this into our calculator, we're going to wind up that x is 19.1. So that is going to be this right here, 19.1. Remembering that this is only half of the side. By the way, it does say round to the nearest tenths. So that's what I did is I rounded the nearest tenth. So 19.1 is only half. We need the entire side length so we can find the perimeter. When we multiply the 19.1 times 2, we're going to get 38.2. And I know this might be rough at first, but just keep following along with me, okay? Our apothem. We're going to need our apothem, which was right here, which they gave to us, was 11. And then in our formula, we need our perimeter. I'm going to write the formula right here. Area equals apothem times perimeter divided by 2. We're going to need our perimeter. And we need to remember we're going to have to find this. How many sides do we have? We have three sides. Each side length we found was 38.2. We had to double that 19.1, so 38.2. When we multiply that, we find out that our perimeter is going to be 114.6. So now what we get to do is just plug everything in. This will get easier as we go through. Area is going to be equal to, we have our apothem, which was the 11, times our perimeter, which was 114.6, all divided by 2. 
And if we plug this all into the calculator, you can do baby steps if you want, or if you're very careful, make sure you're plugging everything in correct. Your area will come out to approximately 630.3. And we don't have units labeled, so we can just say units squared. Okay, remember we are dealing with area still. Okay, a lot of steps. Okay, a lot of steps coming up. I mean, the, the angle, easy formula. Okay, trigonometry, just remembering what we did and then remembering looking at our side, making sure we're using the entire side. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. This next one gives us the side. Okay, so we can easily find perimeter. Okay, so over here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of write in, we're going to find our apothem. And to find our perimeter, we already have here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six sides times, we already have our side length of 16, so we can automatically find out that our perimeter will be 96, get that out of the way. Now, when we draw in the right triangle, here's our center, we need our apothem, okay, going to the midpoint, remembering bam, bam, midpoint, and then we're going to draw in our radius, okay, so here, what this triangle is going to be looking like, we're going to draw it off to the side, Here's our 90 degree angle. The reference angle that we're going to be using is going to be right here. Okay. Now we need to remember about the side length of this triangle that we're going to be using trigonometry. It is only half of this 16. It is 8. Okay, because we only took half of that side. We need to find the apothem, which is right here, which will be this side, so we'll have X. Now Let's go find our reference angle. What is the measurement of this? Well, our reference angle is going to be 360 divided by 2 times the number of sides. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 total sides, which this will end up coming out to 30 degrees. So our reference angle will be 30. Now taking a look at trigonometry here. Here's our reference angle. Again, we're not using our hypotenuse in this case, but on the opposite side, 8 is going to be our opposite, and x right here is adjacent. So we will be using TOA again, tangent. So let's fill this in. We have tangent of our reference angle, 30 degrees, is equal to opposite, which was 8, over adjacent, which was x. In this case, this is the trick where we just switch and uh, divide. So we're x and tangent of 30 are going to switch places. x is going to come over here. And then the tangent of 30 is going to take x's place under here. And so we can plug into our calculator 8 over the tangent of 30. We'll round to the nearest tenth here. And we're going to find that this will be approximately 13.9. The x that we found ends up being your apothem, 13.9. So there we have ev everything we need now because we found our perimeter. Here's our apothem. So we plug in area equals. We have our apothem, 13.9, times our perimeter of 96, all divided by 2. Again, we don't have a unit measurement, so we'll just put unit squared. We should have approximately 667.2 units squared. Okay, again, it's just a matter of using that trigonometry, looking at that triangle, figuring out what it is that we need. All right, the next one. The next one's going to take a couple steps. We are going to have to use trigonometry twice on this, so follow along with me, please. Okay, we're given the radius. We're going to go ahead and go in here and draw in our apothem. So we have our 90 degree angle here, which I forgot to draw up here. And then we're going to take a look at this triangle. All right, so let's see here. We've got our triangle going like this. It's our 90 degrees. Here is 12. Our reference angle right here. We need to remember our reference angle. Here we have one, two, three, four, five. We have six sides again. So we can just take from up here, we saw that six sides, that angle's going to be 30 degrees. Okay, so here's 30. Now, we need to find two different things. We need the apothem, and then we need half that side right here. 
So what we can do is what I like to do is just put an X and a Y and we're going to solve them separately. And we've done this with trigonometry where we've had the X and the Y and we've had to do, we've had to do it twice. Here's your reference angle. We're going to be using the hypotenuse here. Okay, so it's the first one of these three using the hypotenuse. The Y is going to be O for opposite and your X is going to be A for adjacent. So depending on what we're finding, X or Y is going to determine which of the functions we're using. So let's start off first. Here's a little information. I'm going to go ahead and start off. Let's find X first. Well, to find X, we're ignoring this. We're going to be using A and H. So we're going to be using cut for cosine. So here we have set it up. We have the cosine of the reference angle of 30 is equal to adjacent X over the hypotenuse of 12. And this is that trick where we can just cross multiply. So the X, we're going to end up taking the 12 times the cosine of 30. When we plug this into the calculator and we, uh, sorry, right next, we end up round to the nearest tenth, we're going to get 10.4. So in this case right now, X right here, we have found our apothem of 10.4. So over here we can go ahead and note the apothem is 10.4. Now we have to find half of the side length. Remember, we're finding half of it, so we're going to end up having to double it to get our side length to find our perimeter. One step at a time. Let's find out what Y is. Well, with Y, we're, long, we're no longer, I mean, you can use X if you want, but Y, just use these. We're using O and H, which is going to be so for sine. So we're going to have sine of our reference angle 30 will be equal to opposite y over the hypotenuse 12. We get to just do a simple cross multiplication again. So y is going to equal that 12 times the sine of 30, making sure that, again, we're in degrees, making sure that we are plugging in uh, the correct trigonometric function of sine. We're going to end up with this is going to equal 6. So let's take a look over here. That means this is 6, which is only half the side length. So we need to see that the entire side length is going to be 12. So when we find our perimeter, we know that we have counted we had 6 sides. The entire side length was 12, though. So we multiply those together, and we're going to wind up with 72 as our perimeter. So let's plug into our area formula. We have our apothem, 10.4, times our perimeter of 72, all divided by 2. We plug these in. We end up with 374.4 units squared. I know it's a lot of work. It's a lot of stuff we just did. It can be confusing. Please. Ask your teacher for for help, for a, a clarifying question, ask them clarifying questions. Go to YouTube.com and search area of regular polygons and make sure you're looking at ones that don't give you the apothem. Okay, hopefully this video has helped.